And welcome back to another episode of our Gospel Love Podcast. I am Caitlin. I am Adam East. And your hello is just like my clap. <laughs> the same every time. <laughs> you right. You it's right. It's just like my clap. I'm Coach D, by the way. But it's just like my clap. Is it? Yes, so it I got to switch it up? I'm saying y'all got me switching it up. Y'all got me, y'all got me eliminating the whole thing. <laughs> But anyway. It's kind of like our <laughs> intro. Moment. It's the intro after the intro. You know, you got your intro song. It's the same every week. And then you yeah. have the welcoming hello, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying anything <laughs> wrong with it, but it's like almost like my clap. I don't like, think yeah. you needed to change the clap. Like, what was wrong with the clap? I don't know. They, they teased me about it. So, yeah. You know. But anyway, yeah. what we got? Um, yeah. Yes. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are continuing our When Should I Get Married conversation right that's what we call it how, how do you know? you know when you're ready to get married how do i know when <laughs> well i'm looking at the board it says when should i get married yeah. you know i'm looking at our notes up there yeah i mean that's cool it's all the same we just we're, we're basically uh we want we want there to be laser like clarity mm -hmm. laser like clarity for anyone that wants to be married anyone like, like right. that's the goal, the objective, the objective in for our, our course that we've created around this whole thing is for, for the hearer mm. to be absolutely sure. Right. And, and the way we do that, we bring them into this, this state of readiness. And I want us to think of it, readiness as a state. It's this position, this state of readiness to take on, like, the ideals of marriage, mm -hmm. able to meet the demands of marriage, mm -hmm. and one of the one of the signs or characteristics characteristics of a person being ready is is there's this confidence, there's this bold, almost a borderline cockiness of let's do it. You still get folks. Mm -hmm. oh, if I'm ready, uh, <clears throat> you sure I'm ready? Okay, we, we got a little more work to do. Because mm -hmm. once you enter to that, that place, it's like a confidence, like, like I'm ready for this. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to give you a laser like clarity psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, that you're ready to initiate the most important, the most important entity God ever created, mm -hmm. and that's marriage. Because that's God's ultimate mechanism <clears throat> for multiplication. His ultimate mechanism for man dominionizing, if I can make that word up, dominionizing the earth, anyways. <laughs> the earth <laughs> is through marriage. I, I, I like what you said in terms of readiness being a state. And I like what, what that also indicates as well, because if... If readiness is a state, and we've already determined, you know, people have been watching for a while, that rest is a state. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that state of readiness brings about mm -hmm. a rest. Amen. And let's think about let's think about the way that the world has operated over just over the last, you know, 20 years that that, that I've been, you know, adulting, right? Oh, I like that. Are you ready to rest? Title. Mm -hmm. Name. Are you ready Boom. to rest? Um, <laughs> time uh, over the last 20 years, time has been sped up on people, right? The attention spans, the the uh, the speed of which technology has caused things to move and, and business and all like everything is just fast, 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 fast right now. Right. And and it's it, it's it's as if I, I can say it actually is. It's not as if it is that this world system is built to occupy time. More oh, than it has in 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 the, in the past. One hundred percent. Right. It's almost at its apex. I believe it's almost at its apex. The closer we get to the end, yeah. the greater the 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 desire or the fight for your for time will be. Right. 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 So what what is the point of me saying this? The, the the point is this: when you when you limit people's time, or when you restrict people's time, or when you when you kind of uh, force people to consolidate their time, that puts a rush or that puts a, a certain level of pressure on the decisions they make. Now people have, 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 uh, what do they call it? Uh, you know, women have like cl clocks, body clocks or something Biological. like that. Biological clocks. 
they put that on everybody now. It's not just women, right? Mm-hmm. So men got to make a decision. Man, am I going to get married? Am I going to stay single? Am I Women, same thing. I want to have children, so that means I got to do this. I got to do that. Like, all these decisions are being made now w- without without rest, mm-hmm. right? And that's because they're not they're, they they they're not being allowed to have the time to learn how to be ready. Mm-hmm. Right. No, that's that's excellent. That's excellent because the readiness, the readiness. You just said it another way, probably a more biblically accurate way. You said the readiness leads us to a rest. Mm-hmm. That enables us to now possess that which God has for us. Yep. The whole wilderness experience, and whenever we want to know the will of God, we got we go back to we go back to Genesis, or we go to uh, the deliverance of Egypt. That gives us that clues us in on on our salvation and how God intends for things to be. The wilderness experience was 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 a place of preparation. It was a place of readiness because God said, "My people aren't ready to go in and possess land. They're not ready to go in and take control of a thing." He says, because if, because you're going to have to fight to do that. Right. When they see war, they're going to want to go back to Egypt. Man, I, they ain't worth fighting, but they're going to want to go back and be slaves. That's that's a powerful thought in itself because you still got believers doing that today. Instead of believing God to be this new creature, they'd rather go back and be living the old man. Right. Same thing. So when we talk about readiness, mm-hmm. positioning us so that we can so that we can come to this place of this place of, of possession, possessing that which God has for us. So that that then takes us to a whole nother dimension of rest. And before there can be a true rest on the outside, there has to be a rest on the inside. Right. If you want to have a rest in your marriage, if you want to be able to rest in your marriage. And, and rest speaks of everything of trust, boldness, confidence, alignment, you know, everything that goes into oneness, everything that comes into that, that sense of having a, a peace of mind, a peace of soul, emotional, all that. Rest, rest includes all of that. It's the most comprehensive word that that describes the a level of relaxation and confidence and yeah. control in life. Is rest like like mm-hmm. it's the word? It's the word. The word means repose. It literally means to repose. And, and the idea of repose is to be worry free, stress free, free, carefree. Like knowing that all of my needs are provided for. Everything I'm at rest. And that's what everybody's working towards. And the rest, and the rest is not a rest because I'm tired. Right, right, <laughs> right. It's a peace. It's a peace. Yeah, it's not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not tired of trying to be a husband. Right. I'm not tired of the rest in relationships. It's because we have all of the systems in place. We have our love system in place. We have our communication system in place. Mm-hmm. We have our economic systems in place. We have our spiritual systems in place. We have the way we, we handle conflict in place. Like we have all of the things that's required that we're talking about. We, we, we're, we're, recon- we're, we're born again. We're new creatures. We're reconciled to God. We identify as lovers. We're connected to the source of love. We, are, we, are, we have the right mindset toward marriage. We, we, have the, we understand what the knowledge and purpose of marriage is. We, we, we understand one is we we have our minds renewed toward husbands we have our minds renewed to a wifey and mm-hmm. now we have we've developed the divine skills of communication yeah we've developed those five which is number eight and and what we want to get into today um we've been talking about that all week in our coffee in the morning club the the five we've 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 mastered the five divine laws of communication that we receive from the word of god once you master and have these five divine laws a part of a part of your normal speech Right. What should be the next question after someone hears that? If they hear what I'm saying, the next question should be. How do I make those a part of my normal speech? Because I just said, once you have. The five. What did I say? I said, what, how did I craft today's text message to the group? I think it was. I think it was. The five divine laws of communication can easily fix every problem you have in your marriage. Mm. I think that's how I said it. Yeah, how divine communication is key to fixing anything in your marriage key, relationship. I'm talking about any conflict. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Any conflict. The final divine law, they can fix it. I don't care what it is. Like, like, that's the solution. Hey, what's up, fam? Today's Winners One podcast is brought to you by our Coffee in the Morning Club. Listen, they say right now the divorce rate is anywhere between 58 and 62% depending on the community or the culture you grew up in. But they say that rate is drastically reduced if you are a couple who finds a community 
of like-minded couples. We have a coffee in the morning club, marriage enrichment community of couples who are driven to have a faith based marriage. This is a marriage that's based upon the principles that God ordained for marriage to be about. If you want your marriage to be drastically reduced from running into chaos, confusion, and trouble, you need to be joining this community. It's our Coffee in the Morning Club community that will enrich you and empower you and strengthen you to win and make marriage easy. To get to make this communication a part of his normal speech and he wants me to send him daily text messages as reminders <laughs> of the beast. Remember, I, I brought it to y'all about yeah. like, we got to make that a part of our, and he reminded me of it earlier. He says, I, I want to be able to, you know, just send him, send him, and we can, we can automate it. We can send him a text message as a reminder of the five divine laws. He wanted to be reminded of the law of edification and the law of grace, the grace field communication, uh, these kind communication, soft communication, and comforting communication. Like he wants that to be a part of his everyday. And, and it comes through two things. Here, here's how, here it is now. Here's how you make the five divine laws of communication a part of your normal natural speech. Here's how it is. One, identify as a lover. Mm -hmm. First and foremost. Katie, mm -hmm. one move. I can do it. One move. I can solve 99.9% .9 of marital issues in one move. And that's get you rooted. The Bible says rooted and grounded in love. Oh, I love it. Like, like when you think rooted and grounded, you ain't coming out. You ain't right. coming out. It ain't coming out. It ain't coming out. I remember, I remember I got the revelation of what it means to be rooted and grounded in something. You ever you ever watch the weather channel and they show you in certain areas where there's a hurricane? Mm -hmm. And there's always this one tree that they show. <laughs> It's always the tree that they show. I'm talking about a hurricane blowing. I'm talking about leaves bending over and leaves fly, flying off in there. Of cars, cars being lifted up. But it's, it'd be a tree that ain't going nowhere in the midst of this hurricane. It's a tree. I'm talking about the branches be blowing away, but the, that tree, the trunk of that is rooted and grounded. It ain't going nowhere. Even in the midst of hurricane-like conditions. Not going when your marriage is is emitting hurricane-like conditions, husband. I'm I'm I'm, I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. She acting up. She wilding out. She's talking crazy. She talking from the side. Next, she she bucking her eyes. All she, the time. Well, with all of that stuff, mm. I ain't going nowhere. He acting funny. He in his emotions. He fussing you out. He walk around with his mom poked out. He walk around with, like he all the time. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I set up for that. I set yep. up for that. I, set up. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't. I ain't moving. I ain't moving. I'm rooted and grounded in love. The first, the first way you make divine, the five divine laws of communication a part of your everyday speech is you got to be rooted and grounded in love. You got to be grounded in. I'm a lover. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you. I'm gonna love you like I know I'm a lover. Yeah. That's how we gonna love. And then secondly, this 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 one here is like hearing, hearing, hearing. That's the start of salvation. That's it. Hearing. That's the start of it. Hearing. It ain't hard. No. <laughs> How hard is it? One identifies the lover, and two hear. You gotta hear. You can you can hear you can hear whether you want to or not. You can hear without trying. You, you always hear it. And you always. can hear in your sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can hear in your sleep. Like, like, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna make this statement. Hearing is one of the most spiritual things you can do. Hearing is one of the most spiritual things one can do. 100 percent Hearing is is hearing ranks at the highest level. Of spirituality. Hearing. It's, it's a spiritual activity. The highest two ranking spiritual activities we can engage in is hearing and speaking. Mm -hmm. Is hearing and speaking. The highest level of spirituality is loving. When you put those three things in, the highest level of, of, of spirituality is loving. Then I will go hearing and then speaking. Loving, hearing, because you're at your most powerful state when you identify as a lover. Yeah. You, you can't, you, like, you, nothing can stop you. 
but then hearing and speaking. Uh, my husband don't believe in that. Well, he hearing is... is they're right. all connected. They're yeah. all connected because yeah. lovers are great hearers. Right. Great hearers are great believers. Great believers <clears throat> are great speakers. Great speakers are great doers. Great doers, they're they going to possess them. So they're all connected, but but the, like like hearing, like that's how you make the divine, the five divine laws of communication a part of your everyday language. Love comes with its own language. So when you identify as a lover, you, you, you embrace the language. You embrace the language. Hearing is a part of, is a part of your spiritual development, your spirituality in every facet. Yeah. And when you're hearing, right, you hear, you hear, when you hear and you continue to hear. We were talking this morning. I was saying, I was saying hearing is eternal. Mm -hmm. There's an eternal nature to hearing. My father, my father probably been passed away. He, he went on to be the Lord, I want to say, probably 20, 20 some years ago. I still hear his voice today. Wow. I still hear his voice today. <laughs> hearing is eternal. I still hear him coaching me. I still hear him correcting me. I still hear him today. Yeah. I still hear his words today. It's eternal. Hearing is eternal. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about, when we, when we think about hearing, like, that's, that's, that's part of God's mechanism to bring us to the solutions. Not just in marriage, but in life. So if you, if you want to be able to, as we talk about these five divine laws of communication, which is a, it, it gets you, it gets you in a place of readiness that you're ready to initiate. And we're not talking about, you don't have to have the, uh, you don't have to be at a perfected level or a mastery level to, to initiate right. marriage when it comes to divine, divine laws of communication. But you gotta be at, you gotta be at a good level. When we, we broke, we broke life down in three degrees. You can break everything down in at least three degrees, right? Good, very good, perfect. Right? Good, very good, perfect. Good is is, is good, but ain't, it ain't it ain't complete. Very good is very good, but still not complete. But the perfect is completion, is maturity. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about it, um, readiness to initiate marriage means you you at a you at a good state in 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 these in these divine in these five in these ten factors that we've been sharing. Yeah. One one of the one of the things that I remember specifically about um, you know, when the light came on for me, I, we had a conversation where we were talking about um, you know, me me having a desire to have, you know, the confidence in myself that I needed to have. And um, you know, one of the things that I remember you telling me was, you know, preparation, knowledge, you know, information, like all, all of those things go into building confidence. And we connected that, you connected that to, to you know, how I, how I consume the word, my relationship with God in, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, how I'm hearing them and, and mm -hmm. you know, the time that I'm sharing with them. And I remember, I remember specifically like, pretty close to when the light came on, mm -hmm. that was a focus of mine. Mm -hmm. Like if I wanted to build my confidence, I needed to build, build my confidence in the word first. Mm -hmm. I needed to, I need to know that, you know, to know that I know, him, mm -hmm. you know, to know <laughs> that I know his will for my life. Mm -hmm. And that put me in a position to be prepared to, to, you know, activate the new man. Mm -hmm. Without that, there, there would Hey, what's up? Coach D here. Listen, I got something I need to say to you real quick. Listen, marriage is made for lovers. Now, once you understand that marriage is made for lovers and you're not listening to them folks that keep saying you need more than love to make marriage work, you have to identify as a lover. Once you identify as a lover, now you got to learn what love is. Guess what? We have something for you that can help you understand exactly what love is in its most comprehensive nature. It's so much more than just an emotion. But you got to get the book to find out exactly what God's intent was for love and how it functions. Thanks. Get the book. God bless. Wouldn't have been a readiness to activate anything. It would have just been me trying consistently over and over and over again and getting the same result. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think, you know, that's that's what brought about the thought about, you know, about rest, because when 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 you're when you're operating from a place of rest. You have all the patience you need. 
you have the new man especially has has a clarity of thought. She can't right? irritate you when you brought No, not at all. She can't. Ain't nothing she can do. You ain't like, good enough. You ain't good enough. You ain't good enough. <laughs> Your irritation game ain't good enough. <laughs> he can't let me flip let me flip it. He can't irritate you when you at rest. Let me flip it. Let me flip it. Let me flip it. They ain't always tell you. It, like, like she can't irritate me. No, no, when you ever said this, listen, 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 listen. Yeah, yeah. Great peace have they that's in love with me. And nothing shall offend them. That's Bible. Yeah. I got Bible. Great peace have they. And God is talking about people who are in love with him. Great peace are they who are in love with me. Yeah. And nothing. That the thought is this. Nothing shall cause them to stumble out of loving. Man, we're giving away some good stuff today. We're giving away some good mm-hmm. stuff. We're giving away, listen. Great peace have they that are in love with me, and nothing shall cause them to stumble out of loving, mm-hmm. out of the way of loving. Man, that's good. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great peace have they that are in love with me, and nothing shall cause them to stumble out of the way of loving. Like that's that's Bible, and that's like, also an indicator too. Like if you if you find yourself you know being short, or or you know running out of, of of you know whatever it is you need for a situation, then you something your connection ain't right. Yeah, something ain't right. Something ain't right, or 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 you made a decision. Mm-hmm. You made a decision that I'm going I'm going to hold on to this thing. Right, right. And you made it. I'm going to hold on to it, and and it might feel good. <laughs> It's Bible said it's pleasure in sin for a minute. <laughs> but feel good for a minute. <laughs> like, we, it, it, let's be clear. We, we, we feel good for a We're second. not saying you don't have a right to be upset. Yeah. Like, oh, what did I say this morning? I said this morning. I said, just uh, uh, fairness and right. Yeah, there's a difference between justice and fairness. Right. The secular world, they talk about being fair. Well, God don't deal. The kingdom ain't got nothing to do with fairness. Right. The kingdom deals with justness, right, or being just. I was saying this, if I sow, if I sow to Leslie's flesh, or if I say something in the flesh and I sow that into Leslie speaking, she is justified in responding from the flesh. She's justified. No doubt. That don't mean she has to. <laughs> that don't mean you have to. Right. But there's justification. <laughs> but you justify. <laughs> if I say something that's carnal, that's fleshly, and that's how <laughs> folks shift it on now. Look yeah, at yeah, yeah. Stuff. Folks take that justification <laughs> all the way in, man. <laughs> if I say something, if I say something that's that's carnal, that's old man like, yeah. then 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 I've sold that. Yeah. Then she's just if she responds with a carnal, fleshly response. Right. That don't mean she has a license or or should do it. Right. But what we were saying was, as you were just saying, like there's times where I might be just in holding a grudge or having a disposition or feeling a certain kind of way. But a lover? Right. No. Lover, lover relishes the challenge of when the average person would get an attitude right now. The average person <laughs> would huff and puff right now. What is so funny? No, go ahead. The average person would, 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 would get a disposition right now. But me as a lover? A child of God, a son of the most high, a heroic husband? Mm-hmm. No, nah, I'm not gonna let this thing cause me to stumble out of loving. My peace too great. My peace too great. Right. See, the practicality of being in love with God is you have rest in your marriage. Yeah. You have rest as a lover. Like that's 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 spirituality. That's Bible, not this carnal stuff folks talk about in their counseling sessions. <laughs> that's that's how you make marriage magnificent. Right. Is you like there has to be a level of peace that supersedes her or him. You're not you're you're not the governor of my peace. I'm not. I probably shouldn't say it like this. I'm not gonna make you. I'm not gonna make you God in my life. Mm. I'm not gonna make you get the God of my life. People don't realize they give that power. Yeah, they, they're strong. You, you know what? When I, when you give her the power, or when you give him the power to govern the peace you have in your life, it's idolatry. Mm. It's idolatry. I know that's strong. It's idolatry because I just made you God. I just made you God. 
I just, get, I just gave you a level of power. God is ardent. Oh, he's very ardent. He, he, he ain't dealing with that. He got, he got a problem with that. <laughs> he got a problem with that. He got a problem with that. <laughs> no, he got a problem. <laughs> he ain't with that. He ain't with that. He got a problem. <laughs> he's ardent for real, for real. Yeah. Listen, no, he got a problem with that. He gonna, he jealous about that thing. He ain't with it. But I, I, I'm i not going to put you in a position that I know you can't handle. Right? Yeah. You can't handle, Sister Leslie can't handle being the God of God in my life. When I when I did when I when I make a decision to cause her to, to be the determining factor of how peaceful my day go, I I've just made her God in my life. Mm. So let me ask you this. So so how 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 is Caitlin supposed to manage because I'm supposed to pour into her, mm. right? And mm. and and with her with her nature uh you know being a multiplier she was designed to be a multiplier of what i pour into her right mm. so how does she how does she manage being the multiplier but but not multiplying the 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 negatives you know what i'm saying like how how does how does that happen that that could be difficult that could be a challenge because because depending on the ratio <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the ratio, what you say? Wait, wait a second, man. <laughs> Depending on the ratio, <laughs> high sometimes. <laughs> the number be high. Oh, what you say? Get it ratio. all out. The ratio. <laughs> Depending on the ratio, will determine how challenging that is for. Her. Like if you got a ninety to ten ratio, <laughs> oh, that's easy. Depending on which way it is. Right, right, right. <laughs> if you got a ninety to ten ratio to where there's more there's more love and there's more, you know, affection and there's more being sown than there is, you know, the ten percent, then then there's there'll be an abundance of manifesting that that seed that's been sown in her of love and kindness and all the things that are going to hit her work husband. Gotcha. And vice versa. You know, husband toward the a wife toward the husband. Uh, but but to be able to to be able to, you know, manage that, um, Again, is is a is a determinant, or uh, a primary determinant of that is the culture. Mm. You know, there's a culture of love, and and there's a there's a abundance of love, and then every now and then we call them flesh flashes. I'll have a flesh flash just as she might say something. I might say it a certain way. I'll be like, ah, I, I don't want to respond like that, right? Mm. And so, but we get to a place to where, to where, because there's an abundance of, of just loving activity being sewn into me now I, i'm not trying to paint you into, into yeah. a corner with this but yeah. like so let's say let's say it is like 80 20 like yeah. I, i'm just i'm, I'm, a, I'm a jerk you right. know what i'm saying and and 20 is the jerk no 80 is the jerk oh we got okay go ahead right right we, we got we got we problems got problem. right problem. that that was the old man right, <laughs> all day right, long right. right but but as we just talked about just because she's getting the eighty percent jerk, don't mean she got to respond that way. Like, how, how did? I guess that's what I'm trying it, to. Well, find it makes out. it more difficult, right? So when the ratio is higher on the jerk side, then you're more likely to get a jerk response, right? Right. Hey, what's up, fam? I want to thank you first of all for watching our podcast. Now, secondly, I want to give you some information that is very important. I was recently talking to a couple and as we were assessing the marital situation, they came to the conclusion that the problem that they were dealing with was because they hadn't laid the proper foundation to build the marriage that they wanted to build. I said, that's exactly right. And I have a solution for you. We put together a marriage mastery curriculum that establishes a foundation that will enable you to build the marriage you desire. We talk about things for, as far as your identity as a lover. We talk about how to build a culture of love. We talk about heroic husbandry. We talk about wonder's wifery. We talk about edifying communication. We talk about grace field communication. Like we talk, we cover so much in this curriculum that it's going to put you on a path to be marriage masters. Now, what I need you to do is click the link in the description. This is going to give you some more insight and in just how you can enroll right now into our course. If you are newlywed, if you just engaged, if you recently married, this is a great course for you. You need to check it out. We got a great price for you. We got a payment plan that you can enroll in. So go now, click the link below and get more information. And I'll see you in our Marriage Masters University.
If it's 80 20, jerk, what's the opposite? Whatever opposite of a jerk? Goodness. What would you call it? Niceness, right? Yeah, nice guy. Nice. <laughs> then, 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 then the ratio of how, ratio, now that don't necessarily mean she has to do it. But Didn't it you say this morning that's where grace would come in? Is that what you were saying this morning? Well, as far as the grace of God coming in? Yeah. Well, that 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 is a part of the process. But when it comes to the, the grace, it speaks to more of a... Grace would be more the opposite. It would be, it'd be 80. Jerk would be 20. Okay. 80% will, will give... 80% 80 of the goodness will give her a grace it, that empowers okay. her. Okay, okay. But, but when we're talking about 80% of the jerk... Now, there's, there's, you, there's more of a potential for you to receive... The seeds sown of jerkishness, if I can make that word. <laughs> jerkishness, <laughs> right? No, but that's what it is. So, so see, the law of sowing and reaping it, it plays a part in, in our in our every factor of our life. Right. And when you're looking at it from from the law of sowing and reaping, so, um, but that the the ability to manage that it would take a very spiritual woman. I'm talking about a highly spiritual woman. And we talked about one this morning with oh, Sister man. Abigail. Oh, yeah. Because she had a jerk for her husband. He was a fool. He was a fool. I often wonder, why did she even marry him? But in those days, there was arranged <coughs> marriage, so we know how that would be. He was a wealthy man. So yeah, the family yeah, money. Like, right, right, right. Yeah. So that, that was how that went down. But, but, but she was a very spiritual woman. So it would take a very spiritual woman to deal with the 80% jerk and not respond with 80% jerk. Mm. We, we brought up Smith Wigglesworth's wife this morning. Yeah. And she was a woman that had to deal with a lot of Smith Wigglesworth's jerk behavior. But she broke it because she was a highly spiritual woman. She's a woman of love. And so she was able to break that spirit and bring him to a place where he got down on his knee before the Lord through her goodness. Yeah. Right? So when we look at it like that, you know, like there's a there's a level of, of empowerment that comes through the five divine laws of communication that will enable a wife or a husband to produce a level of loving and a level of spirituality and a level of affection and, and comforting and, and empowerment that that that's off the charts. Like it's 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 in our control. And if there's one thing that that our gospel love brand and, and, and when we talk about the good news of love and marriage that we want to bring to the forefront is that it's in our control. No doubt. No like like it's in our control. Right. Uh, the quality of our marriages the quantity uh, or the longevity of our marriages is in our control. Jesus restored that control yeah. when he made us new creatures in Christ. I think, I think the, the becoming like it, when, when you, when you become the new man, it, it's not a, like, it's just an activation of everything that, 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 uh, you know, God has already put in, in, in the new man. Right. And, and there's that ability to, you know, as you were saying, um, I'm trying not to lose my thought because I'm trying to like put this mm -hmm. all together as I'm thinking about it. But the, the, the point I really want to get to, I'll just get to it. There's 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 an ability. There's a as you said, control. There's a there's a realization that even though I'm a man and I'm supposed to be masculine. I'm still supposed to serve my wife. Mm -hmm. Right. And in the process of serving my wife, there, there, there's a, there's a mentality where even if she's shaking her neck, even if she's, you know, uh, 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 you know, upset about something, whatever the case is, like, it's still my responsibility as, as the man, as the husband, it, you know, as, as the, the culture establisher mm -hmm. in the household to, to, to think first, well, okay, I'm gonna just I'm gonna love her so good that attitude gonna go away. Love her right out of her. Man. Like I, but you got to be a lover to think like that. Well, no doubt, no doubt. Gotta, but that's that's why you got to get to the new. That's man. why you got to get to the new man, right? You got you got for, for what you're talking about. You got to identify as a lover. And so we were talking. We were we were, we were listening to a guy on a, on a, on a, on a part, on a social media day talking about talking about spirituality, and he was he was naming some religious organizations and talking about how spiritual they are. They ain't spiritual. You, you can't be spiritual until you're born again. Ain't nothing spiritual about you. You might be soulish, <laughs> you know, but you ain't spiritual to the, to, and from a biblical standpoint, ain't no, ain't no spirituality to after new birth. Right. I mean, and if you don't, if you don't renew the mind, then that, that's going to be suppressed. But you ain't spiritual until you're born again. So the spirituality that you need to be, marriage is a spiritual activity. 
Marriage ain't for the carnal folk. God didn't create create marriage for the fallen man. Right. He created marriage for the for the <clears throat> new creature, for the new man, for the God kind of man. He didn't create He didn't create marriage for the Adam kind of man. He created it for the God kind of man. That's why That's why the fallen man struggles with it so much, because they don't have the capacity to meet the demands of marriage to the degree that they meet. And you get some folks that's able to suffer through things or settle for things. And most folks settling for less than what marriage is supposed to be. That's how they're right. able to, you know, last. But when you talk about the true, the true nature of marriage and coming into the power and the pleasures and the and the purpose of oneness, you can't do that. You can't do that in the fallen state. Yeah. You can't do the stuff you're talking about in the fallen state. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't overturn a 80-20 jerk jerk dominant relationship as a woman, you can't overturn that unless you're spiritual, unless you're born again. You can't do that unless you're operating in the new in the new man. It can't happen like that. So we need to like the conversations we have about marriage on, on all these podcasts and talk to this is is it's child's play. Right. It's kitty stuff. <clears throat> it's child stuff. Stuff need to go in the garbage. Because you ain't helping nobody. They need to put it in the garbage. It's yeah. child's play. Yeah. Marriage is a spiritual activity. And it's only for the spiritual. When you when you look at Ephesians, it's it's going through a it's Paul is going through the the spirit the, the the he's going through the he said he said be being filled that's the highest level and the most progressive na- uh, 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 spiritual speech we see Paul making be being filled with the spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms here's the spirit song singing making melody your heart unto the Lord husbands love your wives what. You sound like an auctioneer. Yeah, submitting yourself <laughs> like I had to rush through it. Yeah. Like that, like, like he's going through the highest processes of spirituality. Then he started talking about marriage. Mm. Like that's it's a spiritual activity. Mm. Like we really get serious about folks getting married, you gotta have some degree of spirituality. We gotta go. Yeah, we I gotta gave go. one too much in. You did, but it's okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, click the link for the uh, five divine laws of communication. Uh, what are we calling it? Uh, course? What is it? A uh, workshop. 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 Yes, workshop. Yeah. workshop. It is free, so make sure you are clicking that and taking advantage of it while you can. Mm-hmm. While you can. And we will see you next week. Thanks so much for joining us. Mm-hmm.